Gotta get your brain right if you're trying to make a million dollars. If you ain't gonna do it for yourself, then do it for your mama. Only stay surrounded by them people if you know they solid. Elevate your hustle up today to double up your profit. Trying to learn some game, it's heavy, y'all gonna talk about it. No Deanna, speak that shit that everybody vouching. Ain't no more excuses valid. Get up off the couch and get up in your bag. To your bank account, need an accountant. Yo, what's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome back to the greatest show on earth, the Man Up Mindsets Podcast. I am your host, Xavier, sitting here with the wonderful Deanna Kent. What's up, what's up, D? What's up, Zay? Thank you for that introduction. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. And today we got a, man, we got a, we got a super dope, dope episode, man. If you watch, if you listening to this, I will advise you, you probably want to watch it. You probably going to see it because this is, this is, it's important for the visuals right must here. But see it's a must, it's a must see. But before we start, I want to advise everybody to please like, subscribe, leave a five star review, or five star rating and a review for the podcast. We're trying to get those ratings, subscribers, reviews, all those things up. So if you do that, we greatly appreciate it. And before we start this show, Deanna, she's going to go into our first sponsor. Yes, sir. So you guys already know what time it is. It's time to get fit and get paid with the Lean and Six Body Transformation Challenge. Brought to you by our guys over at Commando Athletics. You know, here at the Millionaire Mindsets Podcast, we are firm believers that health is wealth, and this is a perfect opportunity for you to make your health a priority. This six-week challenge comes with easy-to-follow workouts and meal plans, so you'll see results in no time. Minimum equipment is needed for both the home and gym option, and all fitness levels are welcome to enter. And the best part about this challenge is the top five performers will each earn $1,000 each for having the best six-week transformation. All you have to do is sign up, show up, and show out. This challenge starts October 11th and ends November 20th, and it will only cost you $79 center. You can sign up today at www.commandoathletics.com. And as always, the link for that is in the description of this podcast. So getting right into this episode, we've got another <laughs> um, special, special dope episode, man. If you into uh, watches or, lux- or luxury or anything, you definitely should tune in because I got my guy, Alfred on so and I'm super excited. We we've been this, we've been playing this for about a month now. So we're glad he's here. So welcome to the show, bro. Thank you, man. Thank you guys for having me, man. I don't think you guys understand how crazy this is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we gonna get, we gonna get we we gonna get into it, man. Man, we, I used to watch you guys like a year and a half ago, like just when I was broke at a dealership, just watching you guys on my 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 computer in front of him. Just to be here is crazy. Damn, yeah, that's crazy. Just a year and a half. Well. He said he was broke a year and a half ago. He ain't broke no <laughs> more. He up now. He up now. So get right to that. For the people who, who may not know, uh, know who you are, do you mind just uh, giving like a quick background on yourself? Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> my name is Alfred Green. I'm uh, 27 years old. I'm from uh, Connecticut. Uh, it's like Northeast. Nobody knows where that is. Um, and I moved down here about seven months ago uh, to become a watch dealer in Dallas. Wow! wow. Yeah. I, I kind of just upped and left. Yes, like, literally in the matter of like three days. Really? Yeah. So you what's can, you can ask her. She's she gets mad every time. <laughs> <laughs> and you said you, and within three days you just said I'm I'm out. Pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. So I was uh, I started in like a hypernova group. I don't know right. You, you know, shout out, yeah, shout yeah. out to my guy Scrap yep. and Reese. Yep. Yeah. They right when I joined that, that's what changed my life, kind of. You know what I mean? So I started flipping sneakers. Clothes. We were flipping uh, the Telfar bags, the mm-hmm. the pools, the heaters, everything. And then um, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have built up enough capital to like buy my first watch and um, kind of be here where I am now. So I definitely owe them some some, some wow. big time. Shout out to them. Yep. So was it you buying that first watch? What sparked you to want to be a watch dealer? Not really, man. It was it was crazy. Uh, so I, I found the company that I work for, um, Gentleman Timepieces, um, via TikTok. So they, wow. you know, Daniel Mag. Social media is a Yeah, yeah. You know, Daniel Mag. Yeah. Uh, what do you, guys you do? do? For, what do you do for a living? I met him before. Um, yeah, he's he's cool. He's a cool mm-hmm. kid. Um, he saw my boss and his R8, and asked him like, you know, what he's do for a living. He plugged in all of our contact info, and then like a couple weeks later, we gave him a free ro- Rolex. So we gave Daniel Mac a free Rolex, and that's why that's what built our relationship between me, us, and uh, and Daniel Mac. Man, that's yeah. that's crazy. So that's how I found. It. That's how I found. It. And I started watching YouTube videos, and then I wasn't thinking of anything of it. It was just something that I just watched because I was like interested in it. And then literally, kind of like one day, I just woke up and was like, sell everything and buy a watch. You know. So in the time span of a week, I sold all my bots that I was doing. I sold pretty much anything I could. And bought my first Rolex. Uh, it was a Submariner, just the same one that uh, that Tay got you. Yep. 
um, and you know when I got it in, that was the first ever Rolex I ever seen. I never even seen a fake Rolex before. Before I seen that, really? you know what I mean. So when I first got it, I thought it was supposed to be bigger. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, uh, kind of underwhelmed on it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I was like, I was like, damn, that's it, you know. <laughs> Just so all this yeah, stuff. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man. But then I was like, damn, I really got like nine thousand dollars on my wrist. On it's wrist. crazy. It's like, and that was literally like seven, eight months ago. And then um, got the watch and I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Let me just. Sorry, but can I cut? Oh, you good? You All good? Right. Yeah. So I was just like, fuck it. Let me just send this text. So I was writing this text for probably like forty-five minutes, trying to see the right things to say and send it to the owner of the company that I am now, saying basically, uh, if you give me an opportunity, I'll pack up all my shit today and work for you tomorrow. I'll, I'll drive down. I'll pack up my whole life, drive down in my little BMW to Texas, and and work and work for you for free. Mm-hmm. Well, what did he say? He basically like after after a day or so, he got back to me. Basically said yes, and I was like bet. So you know, I got everything in order. I planned planned it, and then a couple of days later, I was like driving down, packed all my stuff, and then just drove down. How, how did yeah. you get his number to text him? Uh, cause um when I bought the watch. Okay, okay, okay yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. When I bought the watch, so he, his number was actually posted everywhere. He we, we weren't as big as, as right, what we are now. Me. So um mm-hmm. so he had his number pretty accessible. Um, and that's when I was texting him to buy the watch. And then that's when I was like, you know, let me just text him and see if this works. I didn't even <laughs> think he was going to, I didn't even think he was going to reply. Cause he probably got that like lot, every day, you know right. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it was, it was, mm-hmm. it was wild. What did, um, like your friends and family say at the time where you were like, Hey, I'm leaving like oh, tomorrow. <laughs> I, I, all I know is like what my dad said. And then what, obviously my girlfriend, she, she was devastated. She couldn't even believe it. <laughs> she was like, what? I kind of, I kind of hinted like, so it was like a Sunday, and I was like, I was like, babe, what if I moved it to Dallas, or Texas, or, and you know, I was just like putting it out there, and then I think the next day I was like, yeah, I'm moving to Texas <laughs> this week. <laughs> it went from I'm thinking about it to yeah, I'm gone. Yeah. That's a that's a lot to adjust to. Yeah, it was crazy, man. Because the, before then, the the furthest place I ever went was like Philly. Mm. I used to go to Philly. I'd never been anywhere else. But there and then, like, maybe Florida for, like, two days. Mm-hmm. And then uh, just to me packing everything up and just driving just down to somewhere where I had never, never been. never been. Yeah. So it was, it was definitely a That's crazy, experience. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. And then you got here. So you, when did you get here? I got here um, March 1st. Um, when I got here. Uh, this year. Of this year. This year, yeah. That's crazy. So your, yeah. life, your life completely did a 180 in less than 12 months, pretty oh, much. Oh, man, yeah. Cra- I I can't even. <laughs> the words can't even explain how my life is right now. Wow. It's crazy. Man. So, so uh, what did um? I forgot what I what I was just about to say. What, what was I about to say? <laughs> oh, I had a brain fart for a second. So, um, when you got here, and what was the first, the first watch deal that you did, and how did you oh, before so, that? How did you get the information? Yeah, about yeah. So, all right. So before I came down here, I knew zero about watches. I wow. Just knew, I just knew you could make money. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So. You know, I, I've always been a hustler, like, ever since I was in elementary school. You know, I could tell you my first sales story. You know, it was field day, hot day, fifth grade, and last day of school. They were giving out free popsicles. And I was going back in line collecting the popsicles and selling them for a dollar on the playground. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and I made, like, $34 that day. You know, so I'll always remember that because I got in trouble. The principal took my money, <laughs> call, called my dad, and I never seen a bigger smile on my dad's face because my dad's a hustler. You know what I mean? And that's where I get it from. And he just couldn't believe it. It was, it was crazy. They couldn't yeah, let you keep the money? I mean, you uh, earned it. No, now <laughs> thinking about it now, they probably they probably couldn't do that. See, yeah. Not, without <laughs> knowing, it was my birthday, too. So. Without knowing that, I would have thought you always kind of been in this because you come across naturally as, like, a good salesman. Like, for the people who don't know, like, being at your shop, I remember when Tay was looking for the AP, you yeah. was like, you was on it. I'm like, yo, he do this shit for real. So you would never know that he just started doing this in 12 months ago. Yeah, I mean, I've always been a salesman, but you know, I I definitely um, respect my craft too. So yeah. I, you know, I read sales books. Um, I have read sales books. I try to read things, the uh, um, kind of the psychology of sales, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, but I mean, I haven't read a book in a in a minute. She always tells me to read. Mm-hmm. But. <laughs> so what did that uh, transitional period look like once you made it to uh, Dallas and you started working a job? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I got down here and originally I was supposed to work for free for three months. Mm-hmm. Right. Damn. So so I took that as, all right, if, if it doesn't work out, then I got three months of just training. 
Because right. I was going to bring it back up to Connecticut and try to do watch dealing. And I had no idea how big it was, like, in New York. Yeah. And stuff, because 47th Street is crazy. Like, you know, I probably, I wouldn't be anywhere as I am now without the training that I had from, like, my mentor, Marco. And right, 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 right. Belt, the two owners. Um, it would have taken me probably three or four years to get to where I am right now if I did it alone. And I did that in seven months. Seven months. Or actually less, because I didn't start selling it for, like, two months so really it's been like five months since i've been selling watches oh man yeah that's crazy like, <laughs> yeah. so and, and we got to get into it because like i said like deanna said before we started this this episode we literally i posted on twitter <laughs> i posted on instagram i got a watch dealer coming on the show if y'all got any watch questions let me know man i got a a, a trillion questions so we definitely got to get into it and you bought <laughs> you bought the box oh yeah man bought, i brought i brought some he bought some pieces. I brought some pieces. He bought and, he, and <laughs> you can't see it on camera. He bought a security. He bought a security guard too because he got he got some crazy pieces in. So he had to have, he had to make sure that's secure. So like we could we could get into this if you want to open it up. Yeah. We can open it up. So here, um, I mean, I already told you what I had in here. Yeah, so. yeah. Just for the people to know, he got some Rolexes. They can see this. Uh. <laughs> 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 so, how how much how, how, how much is that? So this is uh, roughly like 1.5 million. Okay, so he got 1.5 million to watch. First time ever First, on the Million of Miles. He got, <laughs> hey man, we different man. We doing it different man. We got 1.5 million to watch. I'm gonna definitely talk my shit. No, he pulling, <laughs> he pulling out the gloves. Like we different man. We yeah, on, we, pull these. yeah, we on some, we on, we on some different time, y'all. Y'all make sure y'all tune in. Yeah, 1.5. And so let's um let's let's talk about this because many people may not know that um watches can be a way of alter alternative investing and like because they hold their value especially if you're not busting it down that's something we also mm -hmm. get into so when we talk about this let's the first question and the most common question i've seen is people said what's a good starter watch for like mm -hmm. an investment piece that's something that can hold this value so yeah so that all comes down to like really your budget um because i have so I, yesterday somebody came in and um they asked me you know what's a good starter watch what's a good investment watch i don't really own any rolexes um, you know, what do you expect? And then I said, you know, what's your budget? He was like a hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. That almost never happens. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. For a starter watch yeah, right. and a good investment watch. So I was like, hey, you know, um, if a hundred thousand is your starting watch, then let me just show you something that's like a hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, and then I ended up selling him one of these, mm. uh, which is a platinum baguette t Daytona. Platinum this Daytona. is a platinum, you know. So these actually went up a lot since the last time that I that I sourced one in about like a month ago. Mm. So these went from 150 to 170 in about a month. You said it went from 150 to month? 170. Yeah. In a month. Yep. yep. And why? And why is that? Uh, just the desirability of them. You know what I mean? This was this is and really it's supply and demand. You know okay. that that's the same thing with any any product that you have, but this one um, super hard to get from a, a Rolex. Yeah, uh, authorized a, dealer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They used to be really easy, and they used to sit. So this one retails for uh, eighty seven thousand dollars. Oh, they retail for eighty seven. Yeah, but they, yeah. wow, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Damn, and I amazing. wanted to ask you, like, what are the key factors for um, driving the demand for the watches? Like, what should you watch right. out for? Um, honestly, like the ads, the authorized dealers, they know what they're doing. Um, they make these hard to get, so people want them, and that just that's the reason why I'm in employed. You know what I mean? <laughs> or or even have or even can do this on the on the side or whatever. You know, there's a million watch dealers out there too. And mm -hmm. what what makes that specific watch so valuable? Uh, the, the 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 demand on it um, okay. and the supply on it. So like they don't make too many of these and they don't offer them out. So I I've had you know clients who spent um, you know a few hundred grand. And they'll never get offered this. Nope. You know, but I, have, <laughs> I, have, I have a client um, that he spent over a million, two million dollars with his AD, and he gets offered this. He gets offered like the Rainbow Daytonas. He gets offered like ev everything that's desirable from an AD. He gets offered because mm -hmm. he spent you know that much money. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? There's no such thing as a waiting list. You know, they they'll you'll go to an AD and they'll tell you I'll put you on the wait list. You know, I'll put you on the list. So the next time this watch comes in, you get you're, notified. You're, you're the person I call. No, that mm -hmm. ain't true. It's all it go. It all goes by. <laughs> it all goes by how much money you spend there. 
Yeah. You know, if you buy diamonds, you're going to be put on the first first list because mm-hmm. they make the most money off of diamonds. Yeah. Mm. Would yeah. you say relationships, too, is a big component of that? Oh, yeah, absolutely, too. Like, um, as far as getting the watches? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. The relationship is is very important. One of the questions, uh, and this shout out to Kiara, she asked this. She said, "What she said, what details in the watch make it valuable for collectors? Like, what specific details?" Um, so the movements are like pretty valuable. Um, so I mean, right here we have like a chronograph. So the Platinum Daytona is a chronograph. So it, you get it's a you can start and stop start time. Stop. You can tell you know how it's like a regular um, stopwatch. Okay. Time. Mm-hmm. That's a basically the, and then this one right here is called the GMT. So this like this um, beautiful. yeah this is a meteorite. Uh, That's the uh, Pepsi. Yeah, this is a meteorite Pepsi. So it's white gold. Okay. So this one retails somewhere around like thirty, I think, or forty-two thousand somewhere around there. Around forty-two thousand. Now, now it sells for like sixty-five. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, that is. But that's the meteorite. So they're running out of this rock because this dial right here is a rock that they cut, and it has to be obviously like perfect. Wow. Right. So they're running out of that rock. So now these are going so that's up. That's why they're going up. Yeah, so, these so, are stuff, going up. so stuff like that, yeah, little yeah. details like that yeah. is what drives the price a lot of the time. Yeah, and I'm sorry. I'm all over the place, too. I, I, never, I never answer any questions straight up. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, got... just, I just realized that I didn't even answer your first investment walk yeah. question. So, uh, <laughs> so what you th- what you think is a good first for, for um, investment walk? So if, you're, if your budget's somewhere around like... Five or six thousand, I would say, go with like a vintage Day- Dayjust. Dayjust. Mm-hmm. Um It's a two tone. Um, it's like what you see on all the movies. If you were to go on Wall Street in the in the eighties and nineties, you're gonna see that watch. You're gonna see a Jubilee bracelet, um, champagne dial, uh, two tone yellow gold uh, Rolex. Mm-hmm. Dayjust. Yep. You know? was- <laughs> that one, or or you're gonna or you're gonna see the Bluesy, which is this. Uh, it's a Submariner two tone with. A uh, blue dial and a blue bezel. Mm. You can see either one of those two. So, but if you if you're in that five to six thousand dollar range, you want something like that. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, like I, a, I, not, I was no, gonna say I got I got a million <laughs> questions, but before I continue, oh, yeah. before I continue on, we gonna go into our next sponsor. This episode is also sponsored by Masterworks. There's a new app billionaires use to invest in a new 1.7 trillion dollar asset. It's one that 99 percent of investors have never heard of. A market whose volume has grown 2,700% and has historically outperformed the S&P 500 while having virtually zero correlations to equities. Spoiler, it's high-end art. This app lets you invest in fractional shares of art similar to a company's stock. And art has been more than just something pretty to look at. For instance, a middle-class real estate developer flipped his Basquiat for 5,814% gross ROI. That turned $19,000 into a staggering $110 million and $500,000. That's 407 times more than the S&P return, 581 times more than real estate return, and incalculably more than its savings account. But many top-tier paintings have price tags in the tens of hundreds of millions of dollars. Just imagine what a building a diversified portfolio of them will cost. That amount of money can be tough to stomach, even for the riches on the earth. So Masterworks, the $1 billion dollar, fintech unicorn came up with a solution why not just make them investable like a company stock you simply buy shares in a multi-million dollar pain and when masterwork sells it they'll send your share of the profits it's that easy early investors already got a 32 percent annualized return from a bansky trade in 2020 luckily you don't need to be a billionaire to sign up in fact membership is free nationally demand has been crazy 230,000 members have signed up over $250 million have been invested with Masterworks, and the waitlist to join is growing day to day. Lucky for you, I'm friends with the Masterworks team, so they gave me a special link to skip to the front. Just go to masterworks.io slash mindsets. That's masterworks.io slash mindsets. See important disclosures at masterworks.io slash disclaimer. And like as always, the, the link for that is in the description of this podcast episode. So if you want to start buying art and making money in the art industry, go to the link in this podcast description to start today. So my question was, like, what's the best way? Because we've seen even, like, people, big people with notoriety, like little Baby, mm-hmm. get finessed out of a watch, you know what I'm saying, out of the Richard Mill. So, like, what is the best, like, route to make sure you're not getting finessed out of watching what it's like Patex or Richard Mills or anything in general, like to make sure, like, how can you pretty much guarantee that 
you getting the real deal yeah, yeah. on your watch. So, I mean, a short answer is, like, you really can't guarantee that. Wow. Right? Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, it's just all about trust, right? So, like, if you if you deal with somebody you trust and, and they take the steps to ensure that that watch is authentic, then, you know, that's probably the best way. But as far as, like, you as a consumer, I mean... You can you can buy the watch and then bring it somewhere and then get it authenticated or get it authenticated before you buy it. But besides that, if you don't trust the person that you're buying it from, I usually say just don't stay away from that anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, like either build uh, a relationship with somebody or find one of your friends who has a relationship that with somebody that he trusts to um, to get something like that. Because I mean, it can happen to anybody. You know, right. like you said it happened to a little baby with that paddock, yep. uh, which is actually pretty funny because that watch just looks fake. Like, you, know, you, you can't really tell, but like the the bezel was a little bit wider. <laughs> it looked, like it, it it looked to to somebody who doesn't know like it, right, it definitely right. looked it definitely looked legit, but nobody knows why that watch was worth four hundred thousand dollars. Why is it? You know what I mean? Because it's a fortieth anniversary, uh, and it's a very special model of that paddock. Uh, it's it's kind of really hard to explain. They made like very little of them, mm-hmm. and. Um, and it being an anniversary edition, it also makes it harder. Makes it harder. You know? And no, and most of the people who get these watches that are very limited, they don't sell them. So mm-hmm. you can't really find them. Oh, you can't find them. You know what I mean? So somebody who's willing to sell it, they want the top dollar for it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, yeah. Mm, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. And I want to ask, so if, when, if people are buying watches for, like, investments, like, how often is there like a manual on like how often they should wear it or it doesn't matter? No, nah, I mean I, I don't think it matters. You know I'm a big um, I'm a big believer in like like even shoes. You know if you're gonna buy shoes, wear them. You know if if you're gonna buy a car, drive it. Wear. <laughs> you know if you're gonna buy drive a watch, it. wear it. Right. <laughs> you know like this stuff is meant to get used because if it doesn't get used, it breaks down. That's what that's what I think. Mm. You know what I mean? That's what I say. So, like, if you have a watch and you're just going to put it in a safety deposit box for mm-hmm. 10 years, when you go back to that safety deposit box, something's not going to work. You know, those lubricants aren't moving in the watch. You mm-hmm. know, those those gears aren't moving in that watch. So, it, it only hurts it more than more than anything. I mean, I, I know people who will wear the watch and they won't touch anything. They'll have their, they'll have their hand like this. <laughs> really? You know what I mean? But also then, like, don't wear the watch if you're just going to do that. Don't do too. that, like, right. Enjoy it, you know? Yeah. Uh, every single watch here is, is, is worn. You know, it doesn't matter if it costs one hundred and seventy thousand, seventy thousand, fifty thousand, four hundred thousand. That was you know? four hundred thousand. Yeah, this one's four. You mind showing 000. that to the, to the camera? <laughs> she got to see that. They got to see that one. <laughs> and that, and you also got to break down why is it four hundred thousand? And that is that four hundred thousand retail or does? No, no. So this was yeah, your uh, retail was probably about uh, one hundred and fifty bucks. What retail was probably one hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> You so joking? Is, yeah, no, I'm not joking. <laughs> oh, what? So this is a. <laughs> you don't mean 150 thousand. <laughs> you mean 150 dollars? 150 dollars. Not 150 thousand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was probably more like like 200 dollars, but still, this is a vintage, a vintage. Uh, Wait, vintage. hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah. I'm here trying to make, uh, make sure. I'm make it make sense. You talking about two zero zero dot zero zero? Yes, yes, two hundred dollars. Like I got. Uh, yeah, I told you I got z- Tay's money in my back. So that's <laughs> two. That's a two hundred dollar watch, but you say this costs four hundred thousand right now. Yeah, yeah, yep. Over what? time, that's how. It, so this is a very special watch too, because for every Daytona that they made uh, in this era, you know, they only made one all gold, right? So, so the the ratio there is already you know kind of crazy too. Like if they made a thousand of these, they only made a hundred of these. You know, they didn't make watches how they do now. They, did, they didn't mass produce, mass produce, mass them, produce like, them like how they do, you know, like that, mm-hmm. that meter, right? You know? <laughs> so over time, you know, th- there's a lot of different things about this watch that I could get into, but it doesn't mean anything to you guys. It doesn't mean anything to the viewers. <laughs> so it, it, it's, like, not even worth, because, like, there's parts on this thing that, you know, cost more than a, uh, a, a 2022 uh, Honda Civic, right. <laughs> you know, and that's just a part, you know, this, this, this bezel alone, you know, costs more than, than you'd ever think. Really? Yeah. How yeah. Much? Like this, like this little black part right there. The black part, the bezel. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you was know, like a hundred thousand? No, 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 no. Uh, something like $25,000, okay, okay, $30,000. Okay. That's crazy. That's, that's crazy. That's for the one part, you know, if it ever breaks or something. So this is like, it's not museum quality, but this is, this is 
definitely something that you don't see every day. What yeah. year is that watch? I believe, man, Marco's gonna kill me because I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the, what's the name? What's the name? Which one? So is this it? is a this is a Daytona. Okay, that's same, Daytona. same as same as same that. as the Platinum. This one's also a Daytona as well. Okay. Um, he says for it's a two hundred dollar retail. Yeah, I think it's 000. like either sixty one or something like that, nineteen sixty one, okay. something something like that. I forgot what it was. Okay, okay. Wow. Well, and what's what uh what what watches that you got on right now? Uh so this is see we like Daytonas here so yeah. So this is a um, a rose gold uh, Daytona on Oyster Flex. Okay. How much is that one? So this one is worth about fifty thousand. Okay. But, that's uh, a yeah, that's a beautiful that's a that's a uh, that's a beautiful watch as got well. That like sun dust on it. How does it feel to wear like fifty thousand dollars on your wrist? Ah, uh, this business <laughs> definitely this business definitely uh, like desensitizes you to money. Like no. really, like really, really bad. A like, different actually, outlook, right? Actually, really bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like even at the show, I go to um, a watch show every month. It's called IWJG, um, <clears throat> and it's uh, one of the biggest watch shows. So everybody from across the country, all the big time like watch dealers, go, and there's probably. Anywhere from 150 to 200 million dollars of inventory in that one room. What? Yeah, yeah. So, so, and most of these guys deal with cash, right? So it's funny. So it's all set up. It'll be like a booth like this, and it's just money counter after money counter after money counter that you can just use. So, I, so all day uh, for the two days, I'm going back and forth with you know 100, 200 thousand dollars, just counting it. Counting it. You know, and, and it's just like seeing all that money in front of you. You know, mm -hmm. like I said, a year ago, I would have been like. <laughs> like damn, what the? F <laughs> like, right. You know what I mean? Like, like, it, like a year ago, I would be like, damn, I could take that hundred thousand. I'll run. Now, if I see a hundred thousand, I'm just like, okay, you, you know, it's like doesn't have the doesn't, same effect on me anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. kind of like I said, this business desensitizes you to money a lot. Because now, like, expected. to answer your question, like, what it feels like to wear a fifty thousand dollar watch, it doesn't feel the same way as I did last year or earlier this year wearing a nine thousand dollar watch. Mm. Yeah. You know, mm. <laughs> it don't feel the same. It don't feel the same. It don't feel the same. It's weird. You know what I mean? Even when I have like a like a two hundred and fifty or three hundred thousand dollar like RM, the Richard Mills. Richard Mills. You know, like now they just look cool. You know, that's all it is. Before it would have been like, damn, this has cost a lot. Now it just looks cool. You know, it's mm. it's weird. It's a weird mm -hmm. like mind change that I had. Even if I think even buying one, I think it's a mind change that has to happen for a lot of people. Because I know, like a lot of people just look at stuff as like spending money. Like, oh, this watch costs twenty thousand. If I buy it, it means I spent twenty thousand. Well, yeah, that's, that's yeah, not no. necessarily the truth. No, it's just no, like no. a transfer. Instead of you not having cash now, you yep. have a watch. Mm -hmm. The twenty thousand is still there because you can sell it and get your money back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's exactly how it is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, same thing with these, like, NFTs and stuff like that. You know, you're not spending the money. You're just transferring it from one Trans place to another. And exactly. you're just holding it there. Mm -hmm. yep. That's the best way to look so, at investing. Yeah, no, yeah. that's facts. And so, someone asks, does the watch accuracy of time play into the value? Is, like, is a service history for certain pieces a big concern? And is service history for certain pieces a big concern? So yeah, two so, questions. So this is a cool question, actually. Um, not really. But it all depends on what watch we're talking about. Okay. Right? So if we're talking about something like... Um, we use like this one, for example. So this one's a very special watch, too. Okay. So this is a, a 1980... I like that bracelet, too. Yeah, it's a Jubilee, Jubilee bracelet. bracelet. It's a 1987 uh, Pepsi. Mm -hmm. But this has a Tiffany & Co. stamped on it. Oh, A, a okay. Tiffany what? So Tiffany & Co. stamp. Okay, damn. So this one was only sold by Tiffany and Co. You know, they would get a they would get a, a Rolex and you know it would only come like this if you got it from from Tiffany. Okay. You know, you can't get this from like Rolex or like any other like authorized dealer kind of store. But um <clears throat> for example, like if this was all original, which this one is, uh you know, this one's worth like 80,000. Right, this watch. But if if somebody found out you brought it to get serviced, over the years, and they replaced parts out of it. Now it's worth something like sixty-five thousand. You know, it's not worth like at all because you you took original parts out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that goes for like vintage watches, right? If you did something like what's what's cool about this question is, uh, RM, Richard Mills, could actually raise the value if you get it serviced. If you get it serviced, it raises mm -hmm. the value. Yeah, because because RM, what they do is. They, you know, they they they'll replace parts, but they replace like um, 
I don't know. They do they do some type of overhaul where they they put like new parts in there. They warranty for another however long years, and mm-hmm. now instead of decreasing the value, they increase the value of RMs. It, it's weird. RMs very RMs very a tricky thing mm. you watch. And speaking of Tiffany, yeah. uh, my guy Reggie, he asked this question. He said, "Does nicknames before release usually equal more potential value? Like if Rolex is about to drop a watch, and the watch community start calling it True Blue." Is it usually a good sign to invest in it? And he also asks, how hard is it to get on the list to buy these watches as a beginner? Yeah, um, no. Even even if the watch does have a, a name on it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it'll be um, a good investment. A, a good investment uh, because, I mean, they do that same thing with, like, sneakers, too. You know right. what I mean? They give sneakers nicknames before the drops, and that doesn't do anything for it. It's not. Right. It's kind of the same way with the watch, you know. Um, people just put the nickname so they don't have to remember the reference numbers. The you reference. know what I mean? <laughs> so, like, me, I can tell you my reference numbers are pretty much all these. You know, like, 116506, uh, 126710, uh, 11650, uh, is it 18? You know, like, all these have numbers to me now, like... When I see those numbers, I see watches. Okay. You know, the, the opposite, but uh, it's it, it's not impossible to get like good watches um, as a beginner. Like w- when you go in there, it all depends on who your AD is, mm-hmm. right? So you can have a nice AD. You go in there, and a- AD means authorized mm-hmm. dealer. Um, you can have a nice AD. You you go in there, you talk to them, you get to know them, they get to know you, and sometimes they'll just offer you something. Mm-hmm. You know, they'll never have watches in the front, but they always have them in the safe, you know, because that's just how they play that game. Um, I've, I've had people go in for the first watch and get, like, one of these. You know, this is a Submariner, mm-hmm. just a regular um, regular black sub ceramic. And these retail for uh, 92, 9200 mm-hmm. And these resell for about 16000 it's really good. Yeah, I got 16K on my wrist. <laughs> <laughs> Something I want to ask you is because, as you know, I was looking for my own Rolex like last week or so. Yeah. And when I went into the store, I didn't know the ask. I was just like, yeah. is it cute? <laughs> like, let me see what it looked like. <laughs> then um, when I talked to Xavier about it, he was like, well, did you ask well, about the papers? Did you ask what year? It was from, like, did you <laughs> ask all these questions? I'm like, I had no idea I was supposed to ask all these questions. I mean, a watch is a watch. So mm-hmm. for people who are watch shopping, what questions do they need to be asking the watch dealers? Um, definitely ask if it's, like, uh, boxing papers. Mm-hmm. Um, most of the time, like, if you're, if you're anything, if you're looking at modern watches, it's not going to come with actual papers. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just a card. Mm-hmm. So the card is equivalent to the paperwork. Um, whatever the warranty, wherever they put the warranty on there, that's that's the papers. You know, so Paddock actually still has papers. Oh, okay. um, AP has a card now. They used to have a booklet. They used to have a, it used to come in a book with the warranty work written on it. Um, so definitely ask them if it has, like, the warranty and the the box. Mm-hmm. The box really isn't that important because you can buy those for like a couple hundred bucks on eBay. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of the time they're real, <clears throat> but that definitely wherever that warranty comes in, that's the most important part. That can make um, like this watch being sixty five, sixty six thousand. You know, if it's naked now, it's worth fifty eight thousand, just because of that just car. Because of the car. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it can be out of warranty for five years already. Mm-hmm. It can be out of warranty, but if it doesn't have that card. It just it's it devalues it like mm-hmm. uh, pretty tremendously. Yeah. It's crazy. Yep. And something this is something that this was also another question that everybody was asking when you talk about watches and plain Janes and bust down. Mm-hmm. So why do, why does uh, plain Janes hold their value compared to bust downs? And is that one hundred percent accurate? Yeah, I mean it's it's not it's not one hundred percent accurate, right? So you can have a factory bust down, right? Mm-hmm. You can have a um, a paddock that was completely bust down from from the factory, right? Now that watch is worth right. always a million plus. Like there's no, I can't really say that, but there's not usually a <clears throat> bust down watch from factory that's all diamonds worth less than a million dollars now. You know what I mean? But they retail for somewhere around like 300000 mm-hmm. 320000ish But if you're talking aftermarket, then yeah, that, that ruins the, the watch pretty pretty big because now what they're doing is they're taking a watch and they're drilling in to the watch Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so you drilling into like a factory case and stuff like that you know that that hurts the value a lot but what people do usually is they take the movement out 
<clears throat> they do an aftermarket case, they do an aftermarket bracelet, and they have just the regular movement, and they drill into the fake or aftermarket uh, steel, gold, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever they, they use. Um, the reason why it does affect it so much is because, you know, just like cars, watch people are, they're, they're, they're connoisseurs, like you said. You know, they're pretty mm -hmm. sacrilege. It's like putting uh, neon lights on an F40 Ferrari. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You just don't do that. You know, so it, it's just things that you just don't do to watch. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> let's, I think let's talk about um, <clears throat> protection and just about the appreciation of a watch. Two things, because uh, I got I got a friend of mine. He bought a he had an AP. I think he said he paid like eighty 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 thousand for it, and now it's worth like two seventy, like two seventy around three hundred. But at the same time, he uh, lost the watch. Oh, so that yeah, guy. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's like talk about how can people. Um, that, that buy these things because they are luxuries, they mm -hmm. call, which means they cost money. Like, how can they protect it? Because a lot of times people will say, well, what if somebody just steals your watch? What well, if you get yeah. robbed? Now you're mm -hmm. out of the money. So do you mind just talking about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's easy. Uh, insurance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, it, that's easy. That's easy. Simple. Simple. Just, get, just get insurance. Uh, if, you, if you own a house or if you have car insurance, they usually have a blanket or wh whatever it's called. Uh, they'll, they'll add it. You know, if you have a home, you can put it under your home homeowner's insurance. Mm -hmm. If it gets to a certain point where you have like this many watches, uh, you probably don't want to put it on a regular like home insurance. Uh, you want to get like um, a very sp special type of insurance and they have, uh, they offer that. You can just Google it. They have plenty of like insurance companies that specialize in just jewelry and watches mm -hmm. and, and things like that. Okay. Um, but yeah, and it sucks too because if your watch gets stolen or if it gets lost or re really stolen, like people don't help help you. You know what I mean? Like mm. you can you can call the cops, you can do it, but they're not gonna do much. They're yeah. gonna be like, "Oh, sir, wow, somebody stole your hundred and fifty thousand dollar watch." You know, <laughs> like oh, you can afford a hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollar watch. Yeah. You don't need it. You don't need. You know what I mean? So they look because because there there's plenty of people who steal like RMs and stuff like that, and they never get found because people really don't care about. You know, a rich person getting right. something stolen from them. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as shitty as that sounds. Mm. But yeah, just to answer the question, just de definitely get insurance. insurance. Get an appraisal. Uh, find somebody who does appraisals. I do them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, they don't cost much. Anywhere from, you know, 150 to $300 is usually what the appraisals mm -hmm. cost. And you submit that to your insurance, and it's usually, um, it's usually, 1% of the watch value, something that's usually how, how much it costs. So mm -hmm. it's definitely important to get. Definitely important. Buying a watch feel like buying a whole house. Like yeah. Whole <laughs> you got to get the papers. It you got to get an appraisal. It can be. Hey, it can so be. you spending this much money, you better <laughs> yeah. make sure you yeah, yeah. get the necessary steps. <laughs> and this this is uh, a question I was asked by a woman. She said, "The be what's the best type of uh, watch investment for women since men's appreciate more? Um, so that, that's an easier question to answer now. Um, compared to like back then, because now, you know, every watch is unisex. You know, mm -hmm. there's not really any women's watches or men's watches anymore. Mm -hmm. um, women are actually um, transitioning to those bigger watches. They they love the bigger watches. You guys, you guys are shaking your head. Yeah, you that's, trying that's, to she's talking me she, out of she, a big she actually, Oh, oh. She trying to, she, I think this is the watch right here that she was trying to get. Yeah, so, okay, okay. So this one's. Mm -hmm. That's the exact one, I think. I think, right? Uh, let me see. Yeah, Something she, like it. Is, is that the one that the the pictures that you were sending me? I you think, yeah. Me? It's very yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, they just, they just. This one's cool because this this dial used to be black. Don't that oh, look really? nice? Yeah, it was really nice. <laughs> it used to be black. It looked really nice. You can watch on the camera too. Oh yeah, yeah. So, um, so, so that nice. used to be black. So that's called the Tropic dial. So that used to How be black. How much is that one? Uh, this one's probably somewhere around like eleven thousand. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's what well, usually <laughs> it would be. It would be probably somewhere around seven. But really because, retail. because that black dial turned brown, that's called a tropic dial, and mm -hmm. that's actually like worth a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> so she, she, <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah. So, so it, so really, like, it all depends on what watch you like. But mm -hmm. try to go for like the forty millimeters if you can wear that. But most women can't, so they go down to like the thirty six. Mm -hmm. Any thirty six day just is fine. Mm. Start with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As yeah. a first watch. Yep, yep. 
But again, it all depends on how much money you have to spend. You know? <laughs> somebody wow, somebody so. like Tay, you know, he, <laughs> he don't care. He be spending money. Yeah, Tay, right. <laughs> Tay, he said he told me he spent like a, a, a hundred this year on watch. <laughs> But yeah, and uh, no, 90 of that was with me. <laughs> They're great investors. They're they, 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 yeah, they, they they investors. They hold their value. And so, uh, another question was someone asked was how to bargain the right way when purchasing a watch. Um, I mean, every dealer has their margins. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So my, me, I try to stay around like the 7 to 11% range um, just because that's just where I feel, that's where we feel comfortable and it's not too overpriced and it's just about market. Mm-hmm. Uh, most most dealers are probably working around that ten to fifteen percent range. I mean, there's really no way to bargain. It's just all about how much the dealer likes you, I guess, uh, mm-hmm. or how much he wants to um, take off for you. Um, I mean, the 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 best thing to say is just ask. Mm-hmm. The worst they can say is no, you know, mm-hmm. or 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 shop. You know what I mean? Um, if somebody comes to me, I try to give them the best price that I can right then and there, and it's usually the best price. That they get sometimes I get beat out, but um, but yeah, the, the best thing you can do is just just ask how what's, much money they can take. What's the best way to actually <laughs> find reputable watch dealers? Like, is there a specific site where you go find some of your area, or how does that work? Yeah, yeah. Um, if you look in the description, you'll see uh, Alfred Green nine four <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> I mean, uh, everybody knows somebody. Uh, if, if you have, like, family that buys a lot of watches, I would ask them first, mm-hmm. like, who they go to, because then, you know, keep it in the family. Uh, I, I, I don't like taking people's customers, like, at all. Mm-hmm. It's a, kind of just a, a courtesy thing Class. in the business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So if somebody, if you say, hey, I usually work with this guy, but he can't find this, can you find it? I'll be like, right. yeah, I can find it, but give him time mm-hmm. to find it because they're out there you know what i mean and if he can't really find it then come to me because you know i, I wouldn't want that for, for me mm-hmm. like i wouldn't want you going to somebody else um without telling me really you know what i mean but i mean the, watch dealers are everywhere you can mm-hmm. you can find them anywhere um and it's, it's they're pretty easy to get what what's a watch that you think is like <laughs> a pretty much a, a guarantee for it to not only maintain its value but for it to appreciate yeah, see, I, I don't like, I don't like even calling watches necessarily okay. investments because, okay. um, I mean, even though some are right, but I can't tell the future. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Nobody can tell the future. I don't know where the market's going, and you know, I don't know where the economy's going. You know what I mean? And that always that affects everything. You know what I mean? So if the if the market takes a crash, my watches are taking a crash. Yep. You know what I mean? They're kind of similar because <clears throat> people who buy my watches. I mean, they're they're in the uh, you know the upper class. You know what I mean. So if they're losing money, I'm gonna lose money. You, gonna, you know, so that's how mm-hmm. that's kind of how it is. But right now, if we're talking right now, um, pretty much any Rolex, any sports model Rolex is going to appreciate at least in the next six months. Um, any AP like Royal Oak, Chrono. Royal is, Oak's going yeah, crazy. Yeah, um, even the one that Tay bought mm-hmm. the other week. Um, that you've seen, that one will go up. Um, <clears throat> I, I can do reference numbers too. Uh, 15500s, 26331, 15400s. I'm trying to find B's, uh, 15450. It's a 37 millimeter Royal Oak right now. Shout out to B's. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's definitely some that are worth investing in, you know, now, but I just can't tell you, like, you know, okay. what, the, what the future. Is there a watch <laughs> that you would say you absolutely shouldn't buy? Like out of all the watches? Oh, yeah, yeah. I can give you brands if you want. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, um, Hublot. Stay away from Hublot. Wow. If you're going to oh. buy Hublot, buy it on the secondary market because they're always going to be um, they're always going to be less than, than retail pretty much. There's really no Hublot that trades over except for the uh, Marikami one. Okay. That's actually going like decently over. But that's like the only one I can think of. Um, Breitling doesn't do the best on secondary market. So if you are, don't buy them from an authorized dealer. Mm-hmm. You know, just buy it from a, a gray market dealer, they call us. Um, don't buy a tutor thinking you're going to make a shit ton of money. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, there, there's definitely plenty. I mean, uh, Citizen. <laughs> Citizen. Lo- Lovato, you know, all, the, all those stuff. They, they don't... If, you're, if your goal is investment, if your goal right, is, 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 is to get value or keep it, 
You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So, I, like I said, I don't like calling watches investments, but there are definitely watches you can buy and you will not lose money on. Mm-hmm. That's a, almost a better way mm-hmm. to say it. I want to talk about the Cardis <laughs> for a second because I feel like this past summer, everybody was getting the, uh, the Sanso Cardi, busting mm-hmm. them down. I seen some watch some watch dealers were selling them from about 30K. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You could get the uh, Santos for less than 10. And they was oh, bustling yeah. down selling for 30. But it mm-hmm. seems like the market for that is cooling down a little bit now. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I see I see that that market slowing down for sure. Yeah. Um uh yeah, just the, the rappers just made them, made That's, them yeah. popular. <laughs> yeah, the rappers, the rappers <laughs> you know made them I mean? extremely popular. You know? Um yeah, I mean, you can you can buy one for anywhere from like eighteen to twenty five thousand right now, um, and that's like a decent buy, uh, and you sh- shouldn't lose too much money right now. Right now, <laughs> right, now. <laughs> right now, right now. But I I always say yo buy buy what you like, because when when things go to shit, you'll still like the watch. Mm. You know what I mean? Don't don't if you buy the watch based on like how much money you're gonna make, you gonna make. If it if everything goes so. bad, if everything goes south. You're gonna hate looking at your wrist. No, that's a good you know point. I mean? You're gonna get that's mad every time. That's a good point. That's a good. I, I just want to touch on because I, I still think like your story is like it's crazy, man. Like the three the turnaround and for three sixty five, that's like that's crazy. I want to touch on like the mentality behind it. Like what what made you have the belief that hey, not only can I switch my situation, but it could switch quick like oh, that you know what i'm saying yeah yeah well i, I didn't know man I, I don't know i i do i do things out of impulse you know i take risk um if you're gonna do anything i if you're young enough like we all are uh and you have time to make it back if if you're gonna risk it all just risk it and just make sure that you know it, it's a calculated risk but if you're gonna risk it plan on having some mentality to try to make it back you know what I mean? That's what that's what I I base my life on. You know what I mean? If I, if I see, uh, see, I'm a big poker player too, so I, I do a lot of like odds. Yeah. So if I have 25 percent a chance of doing anything, I'm just gonna take it. I like the odds. 25 percent. Me personally, I like you know, that. I, I like the odds. You know, if if it, if I have a if I have a 12 percent a chance of doing something, I'm gonna take it because if I if I keep Risk doing taker. it, eventually I'm gonna you gonna hit. I'm gonna hit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's how I, that's how I am. What yeah. would you say? Um, what skill sets or the mindset you need to be in the luxury market of selling different products? Because that's you know it's a completely different world from mm-hmm. selling things on yeah. you know just regular retail. You got a products. different audience, different clientele. Yeah, uh, professionalism for sure. Mm. Um, you have to learn how to talk. You know, like I don't I don't use the word cheap. I use affordable. You know what I mean? I don't I don't use. I try to stay around the word budget because people don't like that word especially when they are high net worth kind of i mean you know it's weird when they're spending it on on jewelry and stuff jewelry. like that they don't want they don't like to hear the word budget so i'll say you know how much do you want to spend you know just stuff like that just being like very calculated on how you even talk mm-hmm. um uh finding like i don't know i, I even forgot the question i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> it's okay i'm just, trying to think know. of everything what skills you oh, need? The, yeah, yeah. Uh, networking for sure. Um, learn how to put your place and put yourself in places that um, could benefit you. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, like I don't know. I'll, I'll do an example. Like if I'm sitting at a bar, <clears throat> I'm gonna sit uh, either on this corner or that corner, so people can see my watch. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, so, and then I'll even fuck. I'll, I'll even play around with my business card, just twirling it. Just so if they watch, they look at my watch, they're going to be like, oh, okay, that's a nice watch. And then they'll look at the business guy and be like, oh, he sells watches. He sells watches. You know what I mean? So that, that's, I'll do stuff like that, mm-hmm. too. Um, you just got to have, as much as it is, like, not the street, you got to have street smarts. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, me doing things like that, you know, um, definitely benefit me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I try to, and then, and then confidence. Confidence is big, too. Mm-hmm. You know? mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. people, people, uh, people only buy from experts. You know, that's a, and that, that's, <laughs> a, that's, a little, I mean? that's a little nugget that applies to everything. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. people buy from experts. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, just like you saying, like you thought I've been in this business for a while, but no, I, I worked my ass off to to study about what I needed to study and keep up what I need to keep up with, so I can not come across as an expert because now I, I mean I don't think I'm an expert now but I think I'm very well knowledge in my, in my field 
You know what I mean? I went from intern to now, you know, I'm a primary buyer for my company, yeah, and, company. and stuff like that too. So, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, real, uh, real quick, do you mind uh, going over each watch really quick, their prices and little details about them? If you yeah, can. yeah. All right. So, um, let's see. I'll start from the top. Some of these are doubles, because, okay. um, but they they're different prices. So you can see like these. Yeah, have very, the same. Have very, very, very minor, minor differences. So they cost um, a little less. So this one right here has a uh, this this black bezel, and this one's a steel bezel. You know that means something, too. But they're both pretty much the same watch. They're called big reds. Okay. How much these, are those? A lot of these are uh, like a hundred thousand each. Okay. Um, a lot of these are just vintage. Um, these are my mentors' personal watches, okay. basically. <laughs> We're, we're like moving to a bigger place, so I couldn't have I didn't have access to any of the inventory, mm-hmm. so I had to come up with something quick. But I knew he had enough enough uh, enough watches and enough money in here to to wow some people. So. <laughs> um, all right, so this is a yellow gold Oyster Flex Daytona with a ceramic. That one, that one's beautiful. So this one's uh, dubbed like the Paul Newman. So Paul Newman was a, a race car driver. And he made the Daytona pretty much like famous, I guess. So this is what they call a Paul Newman dial. Even though, see, like I said, some of these, some of mm-hmm. these don't mean anything to you guys. No, <laughs> right. so they're just vintage watches. But these are the, the these watches are the reason why these watches are so big. You know, so mm-hmm. that's why I like vintage too. You know, and I also like like vintage because. You can be wearing four hundred thousand dollars on your wrist, and nobody would even blink. Nobody, nobody have would an even, idea. Nobody would have any idea. Because if you felt this watch, you would think nothing. You know what I mean? But it is what it is, and that's what makes it makes it so expensive. Makes it so expensive. So this watch um, retails for somewhere around like thirty eight thousand, uh, and it goes or thirty six thousand. And it, this one goes for forty-five to fifty thousand. Okay, because you ain't gonna get it at the Rolex store. <laughs> no, 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 If anybody but the Rolex hard, store, it's empty. empty. Everywhere. No, no, no. Yo, yo. Now what they're doing is, um, they're getting real pissed at dealers like us. Why is um, that? Because they just don't like gray market dealers. They don't like secondary market dealers, even though they're the reason why we're in business. You know what I mean? Because exactly. they're not giving people their watches. They definitely <clears throat> You can't get them. So what they're doing now is they're they're putting all these watches out with no movements in them. So they don't even work just to show that they have something in there. So people come in and they talk to them. But you can't buy them. You can't buy them. Even if they do have yeah. movements in them, they stop the movements inside so they don't work. So you can just look at them. You know what I mean? So they're doing stuff like that. When I was in my when, when I was in Miami, I went in the store and they had they had the exact same thing you just described. They had watches out, mm-hmm. and then it was asked like, "Thank." It was like, "Oh, you, we not we not selling this. You yeah. can't buy it." I'm like, "Why the hell y'all?" I was thinking like, "Why y'all got these out then?" But it makes sense now that you said it. I had no idea. I'm like, "Why the hell they got these watches out?" They yeah, and they're all like that. Ap's like that. Paddock's like that. It's funny. They they don't like us at all. It's specifically our company, because we have a big YouTube channel. I don't know if you guys yeah, yeah, if you guys see uh, the timepiece gentleman on um on YouTube. We do a day in the life series, and one of our clients is actually um, trying to figure out a way to say it without um, giving too much giving too much information. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, one of my clients is big with a brand, uh, so big that Switzerland is actually watching us, our channel, mm-hmm. just to see like what watches we have, so they can uh, send shoppers. To come into our store to take down the serial numbers so they can see who who sold it to us so they're doing stuff like that that's crazy yeah and that's like switch i mean in the watch business like it if like company in switzerland's like like let's say rolex was looking at us the the factory in switzerland the ceo everywhere wherever is out there they're watching us and then sending people to us to like try to try to get the cereal. Try to get the cereal. Like, no sir. No, so, no, yeah, no, it's, no. it's funny. It's funny. So yeah. like when people are in, they're trying to take a picture. I'll say just just angle it a little bit, just so you can't see the cereal number at the bottom of this. You know, so I'll ask uh, that. I, 
I want to ask you real quick. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we've been talking about the value going up and all that in the watches, but what if someone has a watch and they're ready to liquidate it to get the money? Should they just go to a watch dealer? To oh, sell yeah, it? yeah, yeah. That's a good question, too. Um, yeah, they. Uh, if you know somebody that buys watches and sells watches, um, you can take it to them. That's probably the easiest thing you can do. Mm-hmm. You can also list it online, whether that be like Facebook Marketplace. I don't know if you want to deal with people there, but you can Craigslist, again, I don't want it. No, if you want to meet people there. eBay has a watch authentication thing now, so you can do it on eBay pretty good. Uh, Chrono24 is like the main uh, hub that people who don't know watches, they know watches because of Chrono24. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, the the easiest thing you could do is either try to post it yourself or go to somebody who you know that buys or sells watches. Mm -hmm. Because these things are liquid. You you can always sell them. Always. It doesn't matter what it is. What it is. Mm -hmm. There's always a market for them. There's always a market for them. Mm. Always. So that's why when people say that this is a bubble, <clears throat> it's been a bubble for 10 years. It ain't, <laughs> it ain't doing mm. anything. Mm. You know what I mean? It's just going to keep growing. I don't think it's a bubble. I think it's it'll correct eventually, but who knows when that'll be. Because when these correct, that means everything corrected. Mm-hmm. You know, so we have kind of bigger problems if, if you know everything's going down that means everything's going down mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. that makes sense that makes sense <laughs> and this this is uh, my final question i have for you just for somebody just for some motivation real quick for somebody that may, may be in a situation where they probably can't see a way out and just listen to this and seeing how fast how, how your life changed in a year do you mind just giving the best piece of advice for somebody that may be on a a, a brink of thinking ain't ain't got no hope or something um man just keep grinding bro like you can't you can't succeed without failure, Facts. you know, and that's that's something that I believe in. Um, I'm not scared to fail, either. I'm not I'm not scared to <laughs> to go broke, you know. I, as long as I know in myself that I can build it back up, and I don't care how long it takes, you know, I'm gonna do it. So if if somebody's like doesn't see any hope, there, just know that if you just keep doing what you're doing and you keep trying to grind, you're gonna make it eventually. You know, and it could be it could be a month. It could be six months. It could be a year. It don't matter. You know, if you know, if, if you if you got something going, just do it. Just do it. That's, that's man, I, I love it. <laughs> and I just want to say, man, bro, we really take the time out to appreciate you. We was really excited about doing this episode, oh, yeah. so I'm, I'm happy we was able to get it done. And uh, before we let you go, do you mind plugging in all your stuff where people can find you, follow you, uh, contact you? They want to buy a watch? Yeah, yeah. And, um, uh, all that good stuff. So you can, the easiest place to reach me is like Twitter would be... Um, at Alfred Green 94, uh, A L F R E D G R E E N E 94. Uh, my Instagram is at Alfred Green I V. So it's A L F R E D G R E E N E I as in Indigo, V as in Victor. Um, you can see some crazy antics that we do on YouTube, and that's the Timepiece Gentleman on YouTube. You can see that we put $60,000 on black at Las Vegas last weekend. Um, you can see me getting smashed drunk at a, at, a, at a watch event that I went to a month ago. Um, <laughs> you can just follow follow us every, everywhere there. So um, that's those are like the last three. So. Mm, okay. Thank you guys again, man. I appreciate that. No, man. definitely, man. We, we definitely we have to do this. And uh, before we before we wrap up, you guys can find me on all platforms at Xavier C Miller. That's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and D. What's your info? And you can find me on Instagram at Deanna Kent, Twitter Deanna S. Kent. And don't forget, you guys, go buy Xavier's Crypto Guide at www.guidetocrypto.com. Thank you for that. And that's all we got for y'all. Appreciate y'all tuning in to another episode. See you guys next episode. Peace. Gotta get your brain right if you're trying to make a million dollars. If you ain't gonna do it for yourself, then do it for your mama. Only stay surrounded by them people if you know they solid. Elevate your hustle up today to double up your profit. Trying to learn some game, it's every y'all gonna talk about it. No Deanna, speak that shit that everybody vouches. Ain't no more excuses valid. Get up off the couch and get up in your bag. To your bank account, need an accountant.